All right, so today we are taking a look at past paper questions that come from the work in chapter two. So let's start. Here we see a diagram that shows a plant cell. The question asks us which feature shows that this is a plant cell. Well, we can clearly see that this uh, plant cell has a cell wall, which is one of the defining features of a plant cell. The second feature uh, that we will be looking for is the vacuole which is also only found in plant cells and not in animal cells. So yes, this cell has a nucleus, cytoplasma, ribosomes and a plasma membrane, but these are all also found in animal cells. So we're only looking for features that are um, only found in plant cells. And this would be our cell wall and our vacuole. And that is um, our answer. So question six, the cell shown in the diagram has been magnified to 3000 times. The diagram is 21 millimeters wide. The question asks us, what is the actual diameter of the cell? Now here you have to know your formula. The formula is as follows. The real size in micrometers is equal to the size of the image in micrometer, uh, micrometers. So the actual size, which would be this. Um, divided by the magnification which is 3000 times. Now it's important to note that when you do this um, equation, when you plug in these values into the equation, our value here is in millimeters so our answer, um, the actual diameter is also going to be in millimeters um, and that is fine for this question as all the answers are in millimeters. So all we have to do is plug in these values into our formula which would be size of the image in micrometers. This is the size of the image because it says there the diameter is 21 millimeters wide. And then we have to divide it by the magnification, which is 3000. So size of the image divided by magnification, this is our answer. So over here, we've got a similar question. A student draws a diagram of a mitochondrion. The diagram has a magnification of 20,000 times and the diagram is five centimeters long which would be the size of the image not the actual size the question asks us what is the actual size so we're going to use the same formula as before the real size or actual size is equal to the size of the image in micrometers divided by the magnification so over here we quickly take a look at our answers our answers here are all in micrometers now over here the uh, uh, image size is five centimeters long which is not going to con uh, correlate to five micrometers so if, before we plug in our values into the formula we have to convert five centimeters um, to micrometers now one centimeter is equal to ten thousand micrometers so after a simple conversion by multiplying five centimeters by uh, 10,000 over 1 centimeter, we get 50,000 micrometers. Now we can divide 50,000 by 20,000 and then we get our answer which is 2.5 micrometers. So the importance here is to take a look at the um, units of measurement that we're dealing with. If um, you get uh, values that are in centimeters and the answer is in micrometers or they ask you what is the actual size in micrometers you need to first convert this to micrometers before plugging in your values into the equation that is very important um, because otherwise you'll end up with a wrong value and they'll probably uh, be equal to one of these but the answer will be wrong because um, you didn't convert the centimeters to micrometers first. If, however, the answer was asking you to, if, however, the answer um, was in centimeters, then you did not have to convert this uh, at all because it's already in centimeters. Um, but just make a mental note of that. 
So over here we've got figure 2.1 which shows a yeast as seen using a microscope and here we can see that they've got the um, a, a point P and a point Q over there. So the question asks us over here, um, you're going to calculate the actual length of a yeast cell shown in figure 2.1. Uh, first, we have to measure the length of the line PQ. So you can measure that length using your ruler and make a note that the length, they're asking us the length in millimeters, so not centimeters, um, millimeters. So if you measured 8 centimeters, it's not 8, it's 80 millimeters because there's 10 millimeters in 1 centimeter. Now the question goes on to ask to calculate the actual length of the cell. So we're going to use our formula again that we've been so getting so familiar with. The real size in micrometers is equal to the size of the image in micrometers divided by the magnification. After rearranging the equation because we need to calculate the actual length of the cell, we get the real size in micrometers times magnification is equal to the actual length of the cell. So taking our measurement over here, multiplying it by our magnification will give us the actual length of the cell. And this is also in millimeters. So we don't have to convert anything here to micrometers because both of our answers they're asking for in millimeters. So again, make a note before you start um, answering the question on the unit of measurement. Question 7. Xylem is an example of a cell, a tissue, an organ or organ system. Well, let's quickly think what denotes xylem. Xylem is a vessel um, made of long hollow dead cells joined end to end and this forms a tube. So it's more than one cell but it's the same type of cell. So if you're familiar with the work in your textbook um, cells and organization you'll see that tissues are um, a group of cells that are so that specialize in the same activity and are found together. Thus a xylem is a example of a tissue. Note here that organs are a group of tissues um, and the difference between a organ and a tissue is a tissue is the same type of cell. So you only find one type of cell in, the, in, a, in a localized area, but an organ is made up of different types of tissue. So each tissue could be made, made up of a different type of cell, but now we've got a whole bunch of these groupings of tissues, they make up an organ. So over here, we've, we're being asked to explain why a leaf is a organ. Well, a leaf is an organ because it contains more than one different types of tissue, each with a specialized function. These tissues work together to uh, make up the leaf. So which diagram represents a typical plant cell? Now, well, if you take a look at your textbook, figure 2.4 shows a typical plant cell. Now, a typical plant cell has a cell wall, which is present, present here in A, B, and D. A typical plant cell also has a nucleus. All of them have a nucleus, however, a nucleus is not generally found within a vacuole, which is another feature of a typical plant cell. So we can rule out D, we can rule out A because nucleuses aren't found inside the vacuole. So then we're left with B and C. C doesn't have a cell wall, so we can rule out C. So our answer here would be B. Um, these round circles resemble uh, chloroplasts. So this is an example of a typical plant cell. As an add-on to this question, go draw a typical plant cell and label it and see if you can do this from memory. If you can't, then you need to study uh, figure 2.4 a bit better and uh, redraw figure 2.4 um, simply from memory. Also, you need to be able to draw a plant cell completely from memory and be able to label it. So question six, the diagram shows a plant cell which has lost water to its surroundings by osmosis. Which part is the partially permeable membrane? The cell wall is not partially permeable, it's completely permeable. Well, our partially permeable membrane would be our plasma membrane. Now, 
this cell has lost a lot of its water um, due to, to its surroundings. So it's, the plasma membrane has started to pull away from the cell wall and that would be our plasma membrane which is the, our partially permeable membrane. So our answer here would be C. If our cell was turgid, meaning um, it didn't lose its water, the plasma membrane would sit here against the cell wall. So here we've got three cell structures that are listed. A cell wall, a cytoplasm and nucleus. Our question asks us which structures are found in palisade cells and in liver cells. Now to answer this question you need to know that palisade cells are found in leaves and liver cells well that's kind of obvious they're found in animals. So the question is essentially asking us which structures are found in plant cells and which structures are found in animal cells. So we know that um, a cell wall is found in plant cells. However, it's not found in animal cells, so we can rule out number one. Cytoplasm is found in both plant cells and in animal cells. And a nucleus is also found in plant and animal cells. So our answer here would be C. So this diagram shows two plant cells, P and Q. How does cell P differ from cell Q? Well, let's take a look. They both have a cell uh, wall, as we can see here. They both have a plasma membrane. They both have a vacuole, and they both have a nucleus. However, cell Q has chloroplasts, and cell P does not. So, cell P differs from cell Q. It has no chloroplasts. Let's take a look at question seven. The diagram shows different types of cells. This looks like a plant cell because it has a vacuole and a cell wall. This actually looks like a red blood cell because it has no nucleus and it doesn't have a cell wall, so it's not a plant cell. This cell also looks like a plant cell. It's got a cell wall. This looks like it's probably an animal cell because it's got a plasma membrane and a nucleus. So which structures do all these cells have? Well, they definitely don't all have a cell wall, that's quite clear. Um, let's take a look, cell membrane, uh, yes, they would all have a cell membrane because without a cell membrane, the uh, contents of the cell would not stay inside the cell because there would be no boundary. So even though this cell doesn't have a nucleus, our red blood cell, it still has a cell membrane. They don't all have a cell wall. Um, only this one has chloroplasts and the, this one does not have a nucleus, so we can rule out all the rest. So when you answer these multiple choice questions and you think you've got the right one on the first try, just quickly run through the rest just to make sure that you aren't by chance missing something. Um, it's also a good way to double check to see if your answer is correct. So don't rush through these questions, make sure that you do them thoroughly.